Nickel 3 oxide decomposes into nickel metal and oxygen gas. And if you have a balanced chemical equation like we have right here, you can relate how many nickel 3 oxides you need to make a certain amount of nickel metal or a certain amount of oxygen. Or if you're given a certain amount of nickel or oxygen, you can work out how much nickel 3 oxide you needed to produce that. And the way we can relate these things is using the stoichiometric coefficients, which are simply the numbers out in front of each compound or molecule that come from balancing the chemical equation. And sometimes when you see it in the terms of chemical reactions, chemical equations, it can be a little confusing. So typically we start with a simpler example. We can think about bicycles. Bicycles are made from two wheels and one frame, and that gives you one bicycle. If you've got 17 bicycles, you can work out how many wheels you needed to make those bicycles. And you can do that with the ratios. You know that every bike requires two wheels. So you can say, if you've made 17 bicycles, each of those bicycles has to have two wheels. And you get these from the coefficients. So 17 bicycles times two wheels per bicycle, the bicycles cancel, and you're left with 34 wheels must have been used. You can also think about this in terms of recipes. If you want to make a certain type of peanut butter cookie, you can use one egg and you can react that with one cup of peanut butter and you can react that with one cup of sugar. And if you do that, you mix them all together, you put them in the oven, you'll make 24 cookies. And let's say you didn't want to make 24 cookies, you thought that's an excessive amount, I only want 15. How many eggs do you need? Well, you do it exactly the same way. You say, well, I need to make 15 cookies. And I know how many cookies I can make with one egg, so I can use that ratio to scale down the recipe. I need one egg for every 24 cookies. So that means I can cancel my cookies and I can work out the number of eggs. And you end up with 0.625 eggs, which turns out is a little ridiculous and probably wasn't the best example. So that brings us back to our original example, our nickel three oxide going to nickel and oxygen gas. If you made 12 grams of nickel and you wanted to know how much nickel three oxide you must have started with, you can use the same kind of balanced equation to work that information out. You start with 12 grams of nickel, but before you can do anything with the mole ratios, with the stoichiometric coefficients, what you have to do is you have to get everything in terms of moles. Because mole ratios, stoichiometry, all of these things happen in terms of number of molecules reacting, and number of molecules reacting directly proportional to moles, but masses are not directly proportional to those coefficients. So you have to convert everything to moles first. So nickel metal, one mole of that weighs 58.69 grams, which means you can convert grams to moles. 12 grams going to moles gets you 0 0.20 moles of nickel metal. So if you've made 0.2 moles of nickel metal, you can work out how much nickel three oxide you needed. 0 0.20 moles of nickel, and there are two nickel oxides for every four nickel metals. So you set up your ratio where the nickels cancel, and you end up with 0 0.10 moles of nickel 2 oxide. This means in order to make 12 grams of nickel, you must have started with at least 0 0.10 moles of nickel 3 oxide. Now it's also possible to use these mole ratios, these stoichiometric coefficients in the forward reaction. You can say, if you started with a certain amount of nickel oxide, how much product do I make? How much oxygen or ni nickel do I make? So if you started with 0 0.700 moles of nickel three oxide, how much oxygen gas could you make? You do everything exactly the same way. You say, I started with nickel oxide, and I want to end up with oxygen gas. So I'm looking for oxygen gas. There are three oxygens for every two nickel oxides. And we set up a ratio, the nickels cancel, nickel oxides cancel, and you can work out the number of moles of oxygen gas. And it turns out to be 
1.05 moles of oxygen gas can be produced if you start with 0.7 moles of nickel-3 oxide.